Hi, this is a gasket for a 1920s Alvis car, and it's an early asbestos laminated Alvis. gasket. Uh, two thin sheets of copper with a thin sheet of asbestos in between. Um, I do a lot of uh, work with old engines, My preference is solid copper uh, every time. If you anneal them well, well enough, you will um, get equally good results and uh, they last, well, you can reuse them forever. Every time you take it out of the engine, just heat it to red heat and let it cool in air or throw it in some water. It doesn't make any difference, it'll anneal and it's nice and soft again. If you're really concerned if you've got any marks on it, you put some kind of joint some jointing paste on it, a uh, very very minimal layer just to seal up any slight scratches uh, but generally these things last forever. Uh, well we'll see how we get on uh, throughout the uh, program. Yeah, here we are in the workshop again, uh, an unusual job, well not an unusual job but a different job uh, this time. You can't really see much there because of all the wood cutting and uh, just having a dummy run a gasket for an Alvis 1920s Alvis cylinder head. I tried another one earlier, I was slightly out with the position of the centre holes for the uh, cylinders. It's not that easy to copy these things. We're getting there, there we go, you can see that's one cylinder head uh, shape cut out. Uh, it, what it's cutting at the moment are the uh, bolt holes. On the head bolt, pull down bolts, and there we go. There's another start off of another head shape. I think, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. And you can see they're quite close together. Um, we'll see how, and you can see on the screen if I uh, increase the size of it, you can see the shape of it, uh, of the cylinder head uh, openings there. And the uh, slot for a push rod and the holes, etc. So let's see if we can get a I haven't quite figured out how to drag this up over, but never mind. Let's go back to top view. It's actually... uh, there we go, we're uh, almost on the last part, which would be that slot which is second from the end. On the right, um, it's got one more cut to do on this one, and uh, we'll see what happens. So we'll try the, I'll clean off some of the sawdust and we'll try the gasket on top and see how it fits. Okay, well, here you can see the uh, gasket laid on top of the uh, piece of tulip wood that I've got here beautiful wood for uh, machining um, and it's a very good fit. I'm really pleased with that. I'm pretty sure that's spot on. Um, go for it. Yeah, as you can see the uh, gasket is a... I'll try it the right way around. The gasket is a really good fit on uh, on this. I've, I'm quite pleased with it. Everything's turned out right. But, as you can see uh, I was thinking of the machine and this end, uh, as you'll know, you may have noticed I've turned it through 180 degrees um, and that's the end, what I'll call a square end, it's literally just got two corners rounded off. Um, I was going to machine that but the, the length of the uh, piece and the width of it is such that you can't really get a hold of it anywhere, you, there's no T-slot in these two channels, they're, they're purely for a presumed return of cutting fluid or whatever. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll put a couple of screws in the end of here, but it's not a very good arrangement. It's strong enough, it would do the job, but the easiest and simplest solution uh, will be to turn the work through 90 degrees and uh, put the all, all of the program. So that's what I'm going to do next, and uh, we'll see how it goes after I've done that. Well, uh, as you can see, I've now got the work mounted transversely across the table and the program I've changed. Uh, I've just swung everything around 90 degrees around the z-axis and you can see my zero is centre on the wood, which is 
as you can see there on the centre line. Um, it's quite a big piece and I've had to take part of the uh, enclosure off but uh, it's only four nuts and bolts and it works quite well. So we'll see how we get on with uh, shaping. Yeah I've just had to uh, reposition the work slightly further out towards me or towards the outside of the machine so I was out of room on the Y axis by 7th hour would you believe it uh, but never mind simple job just to move it and uh, we're about ready to give it a try again right, see there I've just uh, put the first line in it's come down to uh, just onto that left hand corner and uh, I caught my uh, screen I've got 0.643 inches to travel so it's looking alright uh, so I've come off single block, block uh, we'll hit cycle start and it should do the business and there we go Yeah, that's looking good. I think it's going to be fine. I think it goes in two corners and then it comes across uh, and starts off the left. This is because I'm fine milling everything. Uh, when I go to do the gasket in real life it'll be copper and I think fine milling will be uh, probably easier on the material. be less tendency to pull it off the, uh, off the surface of whatever we bond it to. So we'll see how it goes uh, when we actually get to that stage. There we are, that's looking good. It's a bit slow, so I'll uh, speed it up somewhat. That's better, full RPM. I'll stop it uh, producing such uh, poor quality cuts. Nice. Uh, you can see it's just going part way down there. It's exactly as I wanted. That's good. Oh well, we'll let it get on and see how it goes. I'll we'll just start the last cut now. And there we go. You see it's right on the line there. That's good. And it's, uh, it might be a little bit over the line at the end, but I'm not too bothered about that. It's, uh, it is only a gasket. It's not. Uh, it's, the main thing is it's got to fit over the the balls and have the holes in the right place which it has at the end and I'm not too worried. Yeah it's not bad, it's uh, it's less than a sixteenth of an inch away, well less than a thirty second I think by a look of it. That's the work positioned on the uh, on the table again for doing the stepped in as I call it because it, as, it, uh, as you can see when I put on the uh, the file uh, it's got a, a step in here and a slight step in there um, just the way it is so we'll see how it goes uh, we'll uh, just go single uh, block until the uh, I'm happy with the position of the tool. It should do more or less the same as the last one. It's not a complicated program at all. Uh, so uh, everything's looking okay. So we'll come off single block and hit cycle start. And there we go. That's it. That's a win. We'll see how this one comes out. going to do three or four cuts in that corner first. Again, all fine milling. Just one more cut to do on that, and then it will come right up to, uh, to towards me. And uh, work away from me on this side, so it goes over the opposite side. Let me do the corner. So that's going to do the other corner. That's, again, that's another one that's got three or four uh, pieces. Anyway, we'll leave it again on, we'll see what ends up like. Well, that's that end finished. Uh, it's very difficult to see in this light, but uh, you can see the profile. 
uh, it's just on the line as well perfect as it should be so next thing is to finish the sides well, as you can see that's the work set up now horizontally or along the table uh, along the z-axis the x-axis rather so um, very simple program just to do the sides and uh, I've made it with plenty of overlap so it finishes either side of where I've already machined so we'll see how we get on I'm going to signal block first and we'll see what happens I think it looks ok there there we go, should pick up the tool any second now picked up so we can uh, I'll just go back here and I use this quite a lot now this uh, mass valve uh, it's very good uh, just gives you a bit of confidence as you're going down to the Z but as you can see I've got 10 inches of travel there it's 10 inches to go so it's looking pretty good anyway it must be uh, as you can see a tool tracking across here it must be aiming for the end here. So we'll see where it's going to uh, land up to cut the first uh, cut. It's looking good so far. Don't think there's anything disastrous going to go wrong with it. Looking pretty good so far. It should come this to this corner here, which it's going to. Sure it here. And it should stop about here. Is that right? Yep, that's looking good, so I'm going to come off a uh, single block and hit the start button. There we are. And that's it. Well, we'll see what the end it finishes off like. It's all in fine mode, so I'm pretty boring this bit. See now we're uh, just on the last cut and everything's looking really good. Uh, I'm well pleased with this. Um, <coughs> next time you see this, uh, it will be uh, the real thing. Uh, what we'll be doing is bonding some copper onto a piece of plywood and uh, we'll machine the gasket uh, from that. Uh, obviously one or two things I need to look out for. Um, I'll have to be careful when I clamp it. But, uh, I've got plenty of pressure pad underneath the clamps because I'm clamping direct on the copper because it's a uh, little market and I don't want any marks on the head gasket. And uh, we'll have to be careful it's well bonded because that's a uh, rescue from the gas that will be moving stuff if it comes away uh, and it'll wrap around the cover very easily uh, and you could end up breaking a cover. So we'll, uh, next time you see this, uh, it will be with the uh, the copper and uh, we'll be here in a basket for you. If you look at the preparation, just to make sure that all the time is right and the program right and it's uh, not well pleased, it's, it's looking good. And here we'll see.